Well, hello there, humans, hippies, earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough, indeed, to be doing it too. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Bushka, and today I want to talk about, well, specifically about calibrated shells. This is a, an interesting conversation that popped up in the Telegram chat the other day. Um, I was talking with Meezy, uh, and I think it was Batman, and uh, a few people were talking about the calibrated shells issue. And my personal preference is to run calibrated shells on a multitude of different tanks. But the 54 that you can see here, the T-54, the Tier 9 Russian Medium, is a really interesting case in point because this is really like the poster child for playstyle and loadout synchronicity. Uh, the 54 has two guns. One of them is god-awful pen-wise, but brilliant in every other way. That's the 100mm D10 T2C. It only has 201 millimeters of pen available now you can get that up to 211 with calibrated shells but you're doing that to ap right and this is a really tough one uh because calibrated shells only gives five percent bonus to ap whereas it gives ten percent bonus to heat and he at one point it was 15 percent, but they had to jiggle that because man you were getting guns like the yagaroos heat and he which were getting 15 percent bonus to pen and that was hilarious and you can see here even without um using AP, I'm getting shots in at times by hitting drive wheels and things. And this is very much what I did for most of my career in Blitz. I used to run the 54. I ran 1,500 games in the 54. And I carried eight heat in it the whole time. Never more than eight. Um, sometimes less than eight. Uh, whereas my mate Maxi would just run heat full war. He'd say, Bushka, it, it pens a T-43. It pens a, an E-100. Why shouldn't I use it? And that was before Heat actually did things like that, where it got trapped regularly by the tracks and things. Old school Heat used to just go straight through everything. It was crazy. Absolutely crazy. There was a time when it went straight through tracks on E100s and things. It was in freaking sane. And the 54 struggles now with Pen tremendously, because the game has changed in such a dramatic fashion that penetration and armor have become legitimately important things and that's good because all offense and no defense was how the game used to be right it was it was all about the offense and now heavy tanks are certainly far more influential than they used to be in the games i mean you only have to go and have a look at the first twister cup and it was all is7s and object 140s like it, it, it was literally nothing else but so you run calibrated shells if you have pen issues but you don't get full value from the AP. And this is where the 54 comes in. The 54's heat is the same on both the uh, lower end gun, the D10 T2C lower pen gun, and the D5400 millimeter gun. What happens though, is if you run the upper pen gun with calibrated shells, you go from a low point of 201 millimeters with no calibrated shells on the other gun to 230 millimeters of pen. And that's far more reliable. And that's what I do with the T-54. And I, I've adapted my playstyle because it also gives me 300 millimeters of heat pen. And that allows me to deal with things like that IS-4. Now, you saw how bloody well-armored, even sideways, with 300 millimeters of heat pen that IS-4 is. And this speaks to the whole theory of high ceiling, uh, low floor, or that's for like the, the 201 millimeter pen gun, or high floor, low ceiling. Because what you're giving up is pretty important when you're giving up that extra, uh, when you're getting the extra pen, you're giving up gun rammer. And gun rammer is just flat out DPM. It is 100% a bonus to your DPM of 7%, which is great. And that, that's hard to beat. But hear my theory on this. I want you to look at these games and tell me how often I am getting consecutive shots on tanks like again and again and again so the use of the gun rammer is a little bit overstated like the the actual use of it when you really need it it's great to have it but when you're only getting one shot on the target even with a fast firing 7.1 second reload gun like the t54 and that's with the uh, calibrated shells then gun rammer becomes very very marginal in terms of its value you can see I'm only getting one shot on that waffle tractor. That's it. No more than one shot. Like, he's gone. He's he's left the building. The gun rammer is pointless there. Whereas, if I had gone to HE, I would have got some value from the pen. But it would have been what they call surplus value. Well, probably. And this is interesting, isn't it? Because then you get into the whole idea that 
Um, it's far more about play style than it is about the numbers. And I love that. Uh, there is a... Uh, people bemoan often that it's not like the old days in Blitz with the, the old loadouts and the simplicity of it and all. But I find that to be such a, a disingenuous idea. The old days of Blitz were not rose-coloured. I remember them. Everyone who thinks that they were amazing is probably, like, cutting out all the crap, like driving a Carnarvon versus an IS-4 or an E-100 or a Mouse, or running around in a game in a T-110 E-3 with seven Object 140s against you. Like, it was, it was a very, very different world. And the changes that they've made to the game have, by and large, been improvements. Now, I don't like the balance all the time, and I don't like the pay-to-win aspects of some of the premiums, but... Putting things like calibrated shells in and making people think about their loadouts and the way they want to drive their tanks is, in fact, a brilliant and positive outcome for Water Tank Splits. The other shells that obviously you would run calibrated shells with uh, are hash rounds. Anything like a Sense 7 and 1 uh, benefits tremendously, or an FE 4202, from having that extra hash. But I've actually run the 4202 without. Uh, calibrated shells and done really really well and it's it's an odd one because if you run the 4202 without calibrated shells and gun rammer you're basically there's a lot of tanks that you just will never be able to pen with hash uh, unless you're in super lucky positions tanks like the is4 and co are just very very tough to get through and you have to understand that your loadout decisions really do affect the the way you should be driving the tank in the old days, you would run gun rammer, vertical stabilizer, and binocular and optics. Like that, that was the same loadout for every single tank. It was just nuts. There was nothing else but that loadout. That was it. That was it. That was your loadout. That was every single time. That was your loadout. And these days, you can choose so many different options. You can run a camo net. You can uh, put a uh, you know you can put hit points instead of armor buff, and it it all dictates the way you want to play the tank. I'm going to leave you with this game here, and you can see that this, I think this PTA does really well, by the way. Um, Rex over there, he looks like he's got the 90mm gun on the PTA, and he absolutely um, manages to stay in this game all the way through. Could someone tell me what that shell was there, by the way? It looks like the Panther fired at me, and either the shell went right through and landed behind me, which has been happening a lot, uh, or someone else shot from behind me. And I just, I was like, what the hell is going on there? Anyway, calibrated shells and the 54, I run them. I also often have run calibrated shells on the 62A along with refined gun. And uh, yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> I know, and the shell velocity and everything. and. I run some odd loadouts, but I like that about the tanks because it allows you... Like, if I'm going to be a marksman with the T-62A, I'm going to run that calibrated shells. And I'm going to... Because it's more important for me to get those shots in than it is to just have on tap 7% more DPM. Um, and these are the kind of decisions you make. This is also the gun with the 231 millimeters of pen that I'm running right now, okay? And the big thing about this is that when you're in tier 8 games, this is legitimately important you can use AP rounds all the time. So when you face tier eight tanks, you don't have to downgrade your DPM to pen. 201 millimeters, if someone's angling in a tier eight heavy, is often not enough to get across the line. You literally have to use heat in your T-54. Uh, these are things you have to take in consideration. So are you gonna run calibrated shells? Have you been running calibrated shells? Have you never really considered them before? You probably should, because there are some tanks where they are brilliant. There are other tanks where you just don't get the return on the investment. If you have decent pen on your AP rounds and you don't have a heat round, you've only got APCR, calibrated shells is only ever going to give you, you know, ever going to give you 5% of a, of a bonus and that's, that's just not enough. Look at this PTA. He's been, he's been everywhere, man. This, uh, this PTA. I, uh, I love the 54. I mean, look at the angles on it. Look at the mobility. I've always enjoyed this tank. Just using the IS-6 and his low-end DPM to get in between him and the charioteer, and then having 230mm of pen allows me to go straight through the front of the IS-6, getting him stuck up here so that he can't move. Again, AP straight through the front, keeping the turret in front of the gun, putting in between me and the charioteer again. 
angling, dangling, just lowering the charioteer's DPM, not letting him get clear shots, switching the heat to ensure penetration. It's right down to the wire here. This that PTA is still at it. Hey, he's still digging in. Great flow by him. Um, and you can see he's only got the low end gun. Charioteer miss, big miss. He goes for a hash round, only hits for 42. Wow, got to get this PTA in. Oh, it's all for the game right here. Boom. Thanks very much for watching, boys and girls. Uh, enjoy yourselves. I hope I'm enjoying myself at Tank Fest when this pops. Look after yourselves. And as always, stay safe on Z Battlefield. Bye for now.